Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of interesting topics, but we gotta address the first things first, One Cooler Pro and the result of this show, as expected, as it was obvious, John Jewett won the show, Team Budesheim actually placed second, and I know a lot of you guys felt like he should have won, I mean, I did see a couple of poses that he did win against John, but I think at this point, if he's gonna continue competing, if he does the Chicago Pro this weekend, the only thing he can change really is posing. That was the issue of this show, John Jewett was much better in his presentation and Tim was sweating a lot, he didn't really control the poses the best way, so if he does the Chicago Pro, he has a chance of actually winning that show, finally winning a show, he got very close here, but not enough, maybe he can win the Chicago Pro, he only needs to practice to perfect that posing, and that's all he can do at this point, his condition here was good, he was big, he did challenge John Jewett in my opinion, it was kinda close, but just not close enough. In third we had Robin Strand, in fourth Hossein Kalate, and in fifth Beef Stew, who we're gonna talk about in this video, but as far as John Jewett, the winner, I mean there isn't really much to say, a couple of weeks ago at Toronto Pro he didn't really nail his peak week and you know he had some tough opponents, you know, Kim Williams and uh, Quinton Araya, here the competition wasn't that tough and he was in better conditioning, he put on enough muscle from last year and his presentation was perfected, he seemed very comfortable, very confident on that stage and it was enough, he won the show, he's going to the Mr. Olympia, however before this show, Beef Stew was the heavy favorite to win this show, but uh, no, no, he didn't win it, he didn't look good, he definitely was off big time, he looked softer, a lot softer than the New York Pro and also California Pro, he was a lot softer, he was holding water, he just simply wasn't on, so what the hell went wrong? He made a story in which he kinda explains what he thinks went wrong, so basically to sum it all up he says that he was holding a lot of water, especially from behind, he did all he could to get rid of it but it didn't work, and he thinks it's because he was dieting for way too long and his body is beat up. And he's calling it quits, he's not gonna be doing Chicago Pro, he thinks it doesn't make any sense, which I agree with, it seems like he's only getting worse show after show, so if he wants to win a show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia, this is not the way, he needs to take an off season, rest up, and then actually peak for a show that he can win. His coach, Blue Taylor, also kinda explained what he thinks went wrong, and here he says that uh, his body is used to an 8 to 10 week prep max, anything longer and his body will begin to fade and apparently they figured this out uh, during this prep, I have some trouble believing that, I mean, if so, this is not like his first season or like his second or third, the guy has been competing for a long time, so I'm sure at this point he knew that his body won't hold the peak for an unlimited time, you know, a lot of people are like that, some people keep getting better and better as they keep going, but in most cases you can only peak once in a season, and then your body starts fading, unless you're off at your first show and then you improve for the next one, but in this case he was peaked already at the New York Pro, which I'm sure they knew he can't win, I mean <laughs> Nick Walker was doing it, even if they thought they can beat Martin Fitzwater or Tony O'Burton, a freaking top 3 Olympian was there, I'm sure he knew he can't win that, I guess he decided, I mean they decided to peak for the show that is going to be the most watched, and maybe it made sense, but if his goal was to eventually qualify for the Mr. Olympia this year, then it wasn't the right plan, I'm sure that 4th place in the New York Pro did mean something to him in his career, but if his goal was to go to the Mr. Olympia stage this year, then it wasn't the right plan, as for his hair, I don't think at this show it was an issue, he was simply off with conditioning, everybody else was much drier and harder, and that's just it, hopefully next year he picks his shows wisely, he wins a pro show and qualifies for the Mr. Olympia with some more improvements, I'm pretty sure he can do it. Alright, the next thing is very interesting, I don't know how many of you guys are fans of Sadiq Hadjovic, I know some of you call him Sadiq Hedzovic, but that's wrong pronunciation, he is from over here, from Balkans, from Bosnia to be more precise, and the guy is competing in one week from now, he's doing Chicago Pro, the plan is unfortunately man's physique, but he said that if he doesn't make the weight, and he might have trouble making the weight, 
he's going to do the classic physique. Let me actually show you what he says. I'm 12 pounds over my stage weight. So I need a weigh-in at 209, which means we have to cut back on some things. So I'm going to cut back on my post-workout Gatorade. No more growth hormone. Growth hormone, I take three IUs, maybe like six to seven times per week, sometimes even less. No more growth hormone. Growth hormone causes water retention. So I'm going to be way more peeled, removing the growth hormone. It'll be out of my system in a few days, um, as well as come down with the carbohydrates. So we're dropping the carbs by about another 30%. But this is all part of the process. I would hate not to make weight. And I already thought about it. If I don't make weight for some crazy reason, I'm going to have Chula wear. They make shorts. Send me classic physique posing trunks. And then I'll weigh in and compete as a classic competitor. Um, why would I do that? I'm already in Chicago. You know, I've already prepared for X amount of weeks. So I don't want to show up. I'm just like, oh, well. You know, I am a two division champion. So I've been top three at the Olympia in both divisions, classic and men's physique. So, and I still know how to hit my classic poses. Granted, these guys are a lot bigger than me, but you know, Frank Zane wasn't the biggest guy on stage neither. You know, he won the Olympia some years, you know, as heavy as, I don't know, 187 pounds, 189. I think he said as he kept on going up in weight, it kept on ruining his look because the waist would get bigger. So, yeah, if Frank could do it, I could do it. All right, interesting. So that video was taken actually two weeks out of Chicago Pro, and he said he was 12 pounds above his weight cap in man's physique, and if by some weird reason he doesn't make the weight, he's going to do the classic physique. Now, I'm pretty sure... He's gonna make the weight. I'm like 99% sure he will do it. It's not that much. 12 pounds. I mean, he does look very dry already, but there are techniques. People lose more than that in two weeks. And he's already dropping out the GH and uh, also like the carbs are going down. And there are other things he can like stop taking that also hold some water. And he didn't even dehydrate. So, yeah, I'm like pretty positive that he's gonna make the weight and do the man's physique, unfortunately, very unfortunately. Now, on one hand, it's understandable. The guy was trying to win the Mr. Olympian man's physique for so long. He was second after Jeremy Buendia all the way back then. And then later also, like a couple of years ago, I think last year it was, he won the Pittsburgh Pro and he looked amazing actually in man's physique. So I think he has a solid chance of actually winning the man's physique. But, I mean, I don't follow man's physique, there is no man's physique on this channel. If he wins the Mr. Olympia, it's gonna be a great thing for him, people will hear about it. But as a fan of bodybuilding, I just wanna see him do the classic physique. He can definitely do it. But then again, even though he did place third at that one Mr. Olympia, that was the very first classic physique Mr. Olympia. They still had no idea what they're expecting of these guys, like what was the criteria. And later, he got much better the year after, but he placed much lower, because the other guys were just so much better, they were looking for better conditioning, more muscularity. Now, as far as like his physique right now, it also improved, it's better than back then. We can't see his legs, I remember they were a trouble area for him to get conditioning in those legs, but size, he had enough size. However, overall, like he says he is much smaller than the classic physique pros, but, I mean, I don't think he's that small. I think he's, you know, okay. And what he said is true. It's not a bodybuilding competition. It's not all about the size. I mean, sure, size matters, but with some guys who have, like, really small waist, really small joints, great proportions, great shape, you don't have to be the biggest, the heaviest guy on that stage. Like, for example, in bodybuilding as well, Dexter Jackson was beating Big Remy, who was 40 kilos heavier. That's, like, 100 pounds. So, same thing can happen in Classic Physique, at Chicago Pro, I don't know who else is doing it as far as Classic Physique guys, I don't think there are any top guys over there, and popularity, I think it matters in Classic Physique, so, if he does a Classic Physique, if he actually practice posing, if he got his legs conditioned, I think he can still do very well in Classic Physique too. What do you guys think? Man's Physique or Classic Physique? He will probably do just Man's Physique, but if he did Classic Physique, do you think he can win and qualify for the Mr. Olympia? But as far as doing well at the Mr. Olympia, the other guys are like crazy at this point. Top 10 at the Mr. Olympia Classic Physique, pff, that's pretty much Mission Impossible. 
at this point that's just my opinion whatever you guys think tell me down below all right and lastly we got a little back update of Derek Lansford and I'm looking at this video of him doing these rack pulls and I'm thinking did he actually make progress did his back at least get even bigger from last year but honestly, I don't see any big changes from Derek this year. I was thinking maybe when he starts prepping, maybe he was holding back during the offseason and now he's gonna start pushing and just starting to change rapidly and just get even bigger, more impressive during the prep. But like, we are at like how many? 12 weeks out? Less? 11 weeks out? And I don't see any, any big improvements from Derek compared to last year. Uh, the back does look absolutely sick, but it was also like this last year. Like I said before, maybe they were just trying to keep the waist down as much as possible without, you know, gaining too much muscle, if any. Maybe they think he's maxed out already, he doesn't need to get any better, any bigger. Maybe they think it's gonna ruin his line, something like that, but I don't know, man. I think he could have been more conditioned in the legs and the, and the front upper body as well. So if he got bigger in those areas, he could afford to go down in condition, to get more conditioned, because that was a trouble area. If he doesn't fix that, he's gonna lose to Hari. I'm pretty sure about that. And so once again, at this point, I don't think he made any big changes. And if he looks the same, it's not gonna be enough. I don't think so. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Whatever your thoughts are, guys, please, down below, comment. And also, if you guys wanna see more content like this, subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.